All roads continue to lead back to the Cincinnati Bengals offensive playbook with the tight slots formation. And in today's video, we're going to be showing you how to beat the double Mabel meta, which is one of the most popular ways that people are playing defense right now online. How do you beat the double Mabel meta in Madden? We're going to show you out of the Bengals playbook. This play, I did want to quickly say, we're going to show it to you out of four verticals in the tight slots halfback week. This play is... This exact play is available in the Bears offensive playbook if you utilize the live playbook feature um, in your settings and you equip the Bears playbook in Mutt, it will have the live version of the Bears playbook. The reason I'm saying that is because we're actually going to be releasing a full ebook on the Bears offensive ebook. It's going to be the most comprehensive ebook that we've dropped all season long. Uh, if you want to start on that, I would check out our Jets ebook in the Patreon and our um, our Bengals ebook in the Patreon because it combines the bunch strong offset and the tight slots halfback week. Tight slots halfback week has been one of the best formations in Madden literally for the last three or four years and is really good again this year. Okay. And this formation is really good for attacking the double Mabel meta that we're seeing a lot of people run defensively. Now, a couple different ways that people can, a um, couple different ways that people can set this up. Let me actually grab the cover two here for you guys. So a couple different ways that people can set up their defense um, in terms of how they're going to be running double Mabel. That's actually kind of pretty significant. The most common uh, thing that we're going to see from people typically is this guy is going to be, if you're, if you're playing someone and they're running three, three, this guy is probably going to be on a blitz, right? And then this, this might actually, this guy would probably be over here. Now that I think about it, he would probably be actually over here. If we were running a true, like the way the meta is shaping up for three, three, it would look basically something like this. This four, this is a four man uh, pressure scheme that is becoming very popular. Okay. So how do you set up a play that's going to beat double Mabel quick? And it's also going to give you the ability to pick up pressure. The way zone works in this game, you actually don't need to pull routes like you did in previous years. So what we can do is we can hitch the right of screen receiver. We're going to block the tight end. This will allow us to pick up the pressure. You can ID the blitzer if you want to. And then we're going to slot apprentice post the left side receiver. And we are going to either ghost route the running back, which is what I like to do, or you can put that running back on a streak and run the play basically like this. Their first read is always to the flat. If that's taken away, you want to immediately look to your running back. And as you can see, if they don't have a yellow zone there, that running back is going to be wide open over the middle of the field. So defensively, they're going to be in kind of a little bit of a dilemma in terms of how they're going to defend this right out of the gate. So one, they have kind of a couple different choices. One of the most common things you're going to see, though, is they are going to try to use the running back. So they're going to basically man themselves with the running back, and they're going to run to the left side of the screen. If you see the user run um, across the, the screen, then you really want to look backside and you want to try to hit this hitch before that curl flat breaks on it. Now, another little easy thing you can do with the hitch is you can put him on a little in route. He'll get a little bit more in breaking. Um, if you leave the tight end on his wheel route, it will basically pull the curl flat out of the play, which we can show that as well. So again, kind of a standard way that people are running three, three right now, it's going to look something like this. If they go to the left side to take away the running back or to try to challenge uh, that that post route, then you've got a really good chance of this tight end pulling out the curl flat, and you're going to be able to hit this hitch. So you see tight end pulls out the curl flat, hitch is a little bit more open, and now you got room to run after the catch. So that's something that you know again, if you um, you know if you're not too worried about the the blitz per portion, that would be something that you could do. Now let's talk a little bit more about like, let's say they start to kind of adjust our coverage a little bit. Maybe they man this guy up on the running back and they have this guy in a purple zone. So they're still going to be in a little bit of a dilemma, even if they're dropping eight people back in coverage. The dilemma is essentially, do they cover the hitch or do they cover the post? Here's why. If the user stays to the right side of the field and you see the running back is covered, what we want to do then is we want to look up to the post and we want to hit it in that little window right there. We don't want to wait to throw that post um, so that the user has to choose relatively quickly who they're going to defend. Okay, if, if we if we don't throw that post on time, then we can get ourselves in a little bit of trouble, um, you know, because if we if we don't throw that post on time, then they can lurk it because they can kind of bait from the, the hitch back to the post. So again, let me try to illustrate it a little bit faster here in terms of full speed, how soon you're actually going to want to throw the post. But essentially, you look 
left, there's a hook, there's a zone, but you throw right there in that little pocket once you identify that the user is to the right side of the field. You really don't want to throw that post um, any further past the, um, the, the yellow zones, okay? And then, again, if they don't have flat zones, throw your flat zones. So let's say, for example, you get like a stock cover two, maybe look something like this. These cloud flats on the outside, they're not going to do a really good job. They have to basically be in hard flats. They're not going to do a really good job on these wheel routes once they cut up field. So you see like right here, see how he cuts up, gets over the top of that cloud flat. So that's another late read that you have on this play. Now, last thing is I want to do, I did want to talk just briefly about man-to-man. -man. Again, this is a really good play uh, for attacking Mabel coverage, but you might be saying, well, how does it attack man coverage? Not terribly. Um, first and foremost, the post. Now, again, as you see right there, yes, the yellow zone did play the post. Most people aren't going to have a yellow zone on the field in their man coverage. That yellow zone is going to be their user, which is one, why we want to talk about this hitch as well in just a second. But the hitch, when he cuts, you can throw this and possession catch it. Most of the time, that's going to be a pretty easy catch. Uh, for your uh, for your offense. Now, if you think about it, what does tight slots really accomplish? Well, they're going to have a corner route, so they're probably going to have a cloud flood over here. Um, this guy, you know, this guy could be on a middle third, but he very well easily could be on a purple or a deep half. Even it just kind of depends a little bit on what they're doing uh, defensively to try to slow you down. The reason I'm saying that is because if they have a linebacker that's manned up on the running back then the running back is a really good opportunity, again, on this streak route. It's going to be kind of like a wheel route. You'll see when he cuts up field. See how he just gets separation vertically, and he can actually get over the top of man coverage, kind of just like a wheel route. So the beauty of this play is it kind of combines the best parts of the man-beating aspects of wheel routes and slot apprentice post routes with the ability also um, to really – Give zone a hard time. And one of the best reads on the play is this late read. This is more for cover four um, or cover three. So if it's late in the play, these wheel routes will clear out zone late in the play as well. So let's say you run your, your concept here. Watch the tight end wheel. It's going to clear out that outside quarter, and you're going to throw this underneath it. That's a super late read, but it does work well if they don't, uh, you know, if they're not sending anybody uh, pressure wise at you so love this play for attacking the flats love this play for attacking the seam area of the field it's one of the best passing concepts every year to be able to attack the double mabel uh whenever double mabel becomes a popular defensive meta so you need to have this play in your arsenal and this is also just a fantastic play for attacking horizontally and vertically as well all within one play if you want to learn more about this offense or if you just want to take your matting game to the next level in general Join the Patreon page. It's only uh, $10 to become a member. You can sign up uh, down in the description. You can just click the link down below and uh, go get signed up. Thanks for watching the video. And if you want to sign up for the Patreon, head down to the description and uh, click the link down below.